for having me. I'm starting to share my screen. And I'll get started. And I'm actually going to turn my video off for just a moment. So hi, everyone. Thank you for having me. Um, my name is Hannah Vandersall. I work at the University of California Education Abroad Program, or UCEAP. Uh, I also am, uh, I don't believe Mauricio is quite on the call yet, but he may be joining in a little bit. And he, Mauricio Kobian is uh, the Russia advisor at the UCLA International Education Office, and we work in partnership uh, to send students abroad through UCEAP. So I want to start by giving a brief introduction to St. Petersburg, where we have our programs. I'm sure that I don't need to give too much of an introduction, but just in case. So St. Petersburg is known as Russia's window to the West, and it is at the crossroads of old and new traditions. Through decades of economic and political transformation have inspired a buzzing intellectual scene in St. Petersburg. It's easily navigable by foot, bus, and metro, and the city offers an array of venues for theater, pop music, dance, art, and sports. St. Petersburg's ribbons of canals are spanned by over a thousand bridges, which has earned it the title of the Venice of the North. On our programs, you can join organized museum visits, boat tours, group cooking classes, Matryoshka doll painting classes, concerts and field trips throughout the country. You can also gain uniquely immersive international experience by volunteering at the Red Cross, art galleries, or NGOs. The first program we offer is Russian Area Studies, and both of our programs are offered in partnership with CIEE, which is the Council for International Education Exchange. And on this Russian Area Pro Studies program, you have the opportunity to attend courses with other US students where you'll take Russian conversation and Russian grammar courses, which are available in the beginning to intermediate levels, along with three elective courses taught in English on topics such as Russian history, politics, civilization, and arts. You also have the option to complete a directed independent research course under the supervision of a faculty member in St. Petersburg. This program is only available to students who have completed no more than five quarters of previous Russian language study. So any language level up to five quarters of Russian language study at UC at the time of the start of the program is available for this program. This is offered in the fall and spring semesters. And even though you're on a quarter campus, you do have the option to study on UCIP programs for a semester length program. And our other program also in St. Petersburg is focused on Russian language learning. This has summer, fall semester, spring semester and year options. You'll be in classes again with other US students where you'll take three Russian language courses focusing on grammar, phonetics, and conversation, along with Russian taught electives, all, all at the Russian language level that you place into. The summer program is available to students at all levels of Russian language study, so from beginners to advanced learners, and the fall, spring, and year options are for advanced Russian language le learners only, so you would need to have completed two years of Russian language study by the time you start the program. Again, directed independent research of, is available on this program as well, only for the fall, spring, and year options. So if you are interested in any of our programs, uh, I would recommend that you visit the UCEAP and the UCLA International Education Office websites. We'll have a bunch of information on there for you. I'd also encourage you to visit the UCLA International Education Office. Um, I have Mauricio's email address listed here. He's a great contact for you at UCLA. And I've also listed my email address as well. If you have any questions, you're more than welcome to reach out to either one of us. We're happy to assist. So please contact us. And I will hand this presentation back over. Thank you. Hey, great. Thank you so much. Um, and I think we'll just do questions about all the programs at the end, if there are any. So Gemma, if you're ready to talk about the last um, let's go ahead with that. Okay, is it visible? Yeah. I can see it on Professor Crescent's screen. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, so I'm here to talk to you about my experience during the 
our last program, uh, the Russian language area studies program um, in summer of 2019, which I spent in um, Almaty, Kazakhstan. Can't go forward. How do I do that? Oh, here we go. So this is just I wanted to show the the first picture that I took when I um, was landing in uh, Almaty, just from the airplane. And you can really see how beautiful it is. You can see that there's these uh, foothills that turn into farmland. Uh, it's really beautiful. And then there's the uh, mountains in the background. And it's interesting because um, Almaty is built so close to the mountains that um, you can say, oh, is it down or is it up to try and locate where you are because the city is angled towards the mountains. So if you say, oh, you're going down, then you mean that you're going south towards the mountains. And if you're going up, it means that you're going the other way. So host families. Um, the most important part to remember about the host families is that they want to um, welcome you. It's very important in our culture to welcome you. So you're tired, you've just spent 24 hours traveling, they're going to pick you up and they're going to make you eat as much as possible. Um, so be prepared for that, but you will have your own room. It's a requirement by the program that you'll have your own space um, and your own amenities. Um, the distance from the university varies. However, the majority of people are placed within a 15 minute walking distance from the university. I do know that there were some people in our program who um, had to take a longer bus ride, but I think that they were the outliers. So I wouldn't worry too much about that. Well, classes are very challenging. Um, you will learn a lot and it's an excellent program to increase your Russian speaking skills. Um, but it's not all just classes. Uh, weekly, you have a educational trip to a, a, a place of geographical interest. We went to a, a reservoir, we visited a, a canyon, did all kinds of interesting things. And then we also did educational trips to museums, parks, monuments. Uh, this is a picture of a uh, uh, Eastern Orthodox church it's very beautiful and inside lots of stained glass. It's very nice. Um, in terms of the classes, it's uh, four hours a day um, with different classes, depending on which day it is. You're usually uh, divided into groups based on your language proficiency. So there'll be five groups based on uh, how well you speak Russian. Um, and you'll be completing um, large group assignments at the end of the, the two month program that kind of summarize your, your mastery of oppression. Excursion, I think that's my favorite part um, because Kazakhstan is just such an incredibly beautiful place and not, not a lot of people know about it, but the excursions that we were allowed to go on were really incredible experiences and really educational experiences as well. You can see in the uh, upper left corner, there's a man on a horse and he was giving us a demonstration of traditional Kazakh um, bird hunting. So you can see in the background, there's a little eagle on the ground, which is very interesting. And there's some pictures of uh, yurts and the traditional swing that we went on. That was really fun. And in the middle is Lake Kinda which is a um, lake filled with petrified wood. It's, it's like a sunken forest, very pretty. Um, some places that we like to go, there are lots of restaurants and um, places to have fun, cafes, all kinds of things. Everything is in walking distance from the university. So although you're going to be spending a large amount of your time in classes and doing homework and all that kind of thing, there is a lot of opportunities for, you know, recreation. Um, and I would highly suggest that if anyone is considering going on this program, that they also spend time exploring the city, exploring um, interesting places and talking to other people who are not in your program, who speak Russian and who want to learn more about you as an American. And I think that's really important to um, present yourself as an American student in a foreign country and in a, in a polite and op open manner.
Okay. Um, and this is our, our last day in the program and everybody's very happy about it, you can see. Um, we got really close with all the members, other members of the program. So it's, a, it's also a great experience to uh, learn about people who are in other flag, flagship programs in um, other universities. And you also develop a really close relationship with your teachers. Um, and I think that it's, it's really special. So uh, thank you for listening. Uh, that's the end of my program. Thank you so much, Gemma. It's such a, I love seeing all the pictures from Kazakhstan and all the excursions. Um, so now we will pass it on to Tyler, who will be talking about the Critical Language Scholarship. All right. Hello, everyone. I'm Tyler. I'm a Russian flagship alumnus, and I'm here to talk about uh, the Critical Language Scholarship. So, so what is the Critical Language Scholarship? It's actually a fully funded language immersion program. So it's a U.S. Department of State program. Um, it's open to any major, and the goal is to integrate language study with one's major. Um, and it also fulfills the study abroad requirement for the capstone year. Uh, so if you don't want to go in our last one, you happen to get the critical language scholarship, then that's something that you can do uh, if you want to go in the capstone year. So where did I end up going? I actually studied at Tbilisi, Georgia, which is a post-Soviet republic here in the Caucasus, and I ate a lot of Hinkali, a lot of Khachapuri, and explored a lot. Um, and it's a lot very similar to the our last program in that you go on a lot of excursions. And so some of them are planned excursions where you go out with your cohort to see historical sites. And some of them, like in the picture depicted here, um, was actually a personal excursion. So I had a free weekend. You basically fill out some forms and you tell them, hey, I'm going to be going here for a weekend. Um, and it was a great experience. Uh, you grow your Russian a lot. You grow your independence a lot. And it's a really formative uh, learning experience. Um, and yes, yeah, so you can contact me or Dr. Cresson. Um, and let's go ahead and go over to the Critical Language Scholarship website right now. The deadline to apply for the 2022 summer program is November 16, 2021. And the program site does change from year to year. So if we look here, last year it was in Nizhny Novgorod, Vladimir, and Bishkek, um, in Russia and Kyrgyzstan. But in my year, we had it in Tbilisi, Georgia. And there are a few requirements for doing the uh, program. You have to write a few essays and you have to have, um, you basically have to fill out this application here so we can actually take a look at it. Um, and if you're curious, you just go over here and look at the PDF sample copy of the application to basically see all the requirements and uh, basically prepare for the application process. And Definitely get in contact with Dr. Cresson and uh, Catherine and uh, Susan Bacchus, and we can all help you get your application sorted and help make your application competitive. Uh, and yeah, and that's the end of my presentation. Thank you.